I want to make a character ready for a windy scene in Spine 2D. But this means I have to carefully divide each and every part that must move alone. This is Cloud. My goal is to combine Touch Designer Interactive Art with Spine 2D character animation. For those of you who caught my previous shorts, you'll know that Touch Designer is already ready and tested. So now, I'm working on the character. I need to separate parts for this character before jumping into Spine 2D. Since the painting has a distinct anime-ish style, I wanted to manually mask the image instead of using the magic wand tool or the smart selection tool. When masking, I start with the silhouette. Defining the shape first makes filling in the details easier afterward. After masking out the outline, I'm going into the mask, select the inside with magic wand, expand the selection a little bit, invert it, and fill it with black. I'll probably use this a lot from now, so I made a shortcut, Command Shift W, to expand the selection. I'll separate this into three parts. The main arm, the back of the fabric on the wrist, the rear fabric on the back of the wrist, the wrist back fabric, the back fabric, and the hand. Fingers can wait for later. Okay, let's see if the covered part is alright. Okay, not bad. The hand moves nicely. Yes. Next, let's focus on the body. First, I'll carve out the silhouette. I'm going to divide that later into upper and lower body. I'm going to break down the upper body into more detailed sections than usual. Well, actually, I made a mistake here. These two will be in the same layer. Yep, yep, carry on. When filling in the covered area, I like to start with generative fill, then paint over manually if needed. It sometimes works, sometimes it doesn't, but this is way faster than doing it all manually. This is a windy scene. I'm going to make her clothes flutter against the wind, but her hair is what's really going to sell this, so I'm going to break this down more than usual. Bit complicated, yes. So I'm going to start with a sketch. I have to carefully think of the overlaps, like what goes on top of one another, making sure that all of the layers are stacking up nicely. I'm going to check this sketch now and then to make sure I'm masking it right. I'm carving out the layers one by one, filling in the covered areas using generative fill. I have this whole process video up on my second channel. I'll leave the link in the description if you want to check that out. At this point, I think we have all of our hairs ready, all perfectly aligned, ready to go. We need to mask out the silhouette of the head. It doesn't have to be exactly like the skull, because it's going to be covered with hair anyways. This part of the head didn't really work with generative fill for some reason, so I used the smudge tool to get rid of it. Now, we have to draw her ears back. Again, masking the silhouette first. I'm carefully selecting areas I don't want. Generative fill, and voila! Time to see if it looks good on her face. I have a bit of an issue here. So the ear needs to sit above the hair roots, but the hair's tip has to overlap the ear. So the top hair layer goes under the ear, and the bottom strands should be over the ear. I thought I did enough planning for this. Let's see if this works. Yes. I don't like that gap between the ear and her side hair. Her scalp shows where hair should cover it. I'll add some color there to fill it in. Okay, great. 
I think this should do it. Next in line, her face. I'll work on that tomorrow. Are you presumptuously assuming the hair is not done? You are. Right. I decided to separate her bangs a little more. We're going to add 2.5D in spine, so I think we could use a little more room. Now let's work on her face. After I finished her face, I was going through her hair and see if everything is in order. Then, I found out this. There is something missing here. Her hair doesn't have any shadow, so I'm duplicating her side hair and make the shadow cast on her face. Before separating her skirt, I knew her shirt was going to be a problem, so I'm creating the backside of her shirt first. I'm removing that weird outline with smudge tool. Alright, this is looking good. Now let's work on her skirt. The front side is done, now we need the back. skirt is done. Now her legs. I'm repositioning her legs and we're almost there. All we have left is her back arm, which I'm going to speed this up. The process is pretty much the same. You carve out the silhouette. Fill in the covered areas with generative fill. Paint over if needed. Remember from the beginning? We left something for later, remember? Yes, the hands. I did not like the shape of her right hand, so I decided to paint it first, then separate later. Here, I'm sketching the shapes. separating all her fingers. I think it's finally done. So here's everything we worked for. Every single part of her body, separated and nicely organized. 
separating parts is honestly the most boring, tedious part of this whole process, but it is necessary and important. While separating, it's like you're waiting. You're waiting for the final animation and imagining the movement in your head. So you want this to be perfect, but you know you're probably going to make a mistake. When you finally bring your separated parts into Spine2D, everything suddenly makes sense. All those tedious hours feel worth it, as your character begins to move exactly as you imagined. 